Thank God that Jesus paid the price. And, and in that, in the price that he paid, you know, uh, turn to Acts chapter 1 for a second. In verse 1, let's speak it together. The former account I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach. First of all, uh, Luke wrote the book of Acts. And he was a physician. He was writing to another friend of his that was an attorney, I believe. In verse 2, and he said, Until the day in which he was taken up after he, Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, had given commandments to the apostles whom he had chosen. Who gave the commandments? He gave the commandments through who? To, through the Holy Spirit. His Spirit. Amen? That's where everything comes from. The Spirit. And it says here in verse 3, to whom he also presented himself alive after his suffering for many infallible proofs, being seen by them for 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And being assembled together with them, the apostles, Jesus commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have received from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. It's amazing where still people are not waiting to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked Jesus, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? But he wasn't speaking about Israel. And he said, then it's not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. But you shall receive what? Power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and to Judea, Judea and, and Samaria and to the end of the earth. So it was very vitally important. He com this is one of the things he commanded his people to do. And it's amazing where that command still is not continuing. People still are not being baptized of the Holy Spirit, or they're not maintaining the filling of the Spirit of God. And it's causing much conflict and much disaster and much shame to the body of Christ. Does everybody understand? Amen? Turn to Mac, uh, Mark chapter 3. Mark chapter 3 and verse 23. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together in verse 23. So Jesus called them to himself, and he said to them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan is risen up against himself, he's divided. He cannot stand, but he has an end. No one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man. Then he will plunder his house. Assuredly, I say to you, all sins have been forgiven, the sins of man, and whatever blasphemies they have may uttered. But he who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit never has forgiveness, but is subject to eternal condemnation. Now, now listen to this for a second. Because they said he has an unclean spirit. Now, a house divided cannot stand. Why is blasphemy to the Holy Spirit unforgivable? Because he is the eternal keeper of all things. Does everybody understand that? He's the eternal keeper. It's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. He, he's the one that's the keeper of everything associated with eternal life, with eternal everything. The eternal plan of God, God's words, everything. The Holy Spirit is the eternal keeper of everything. Everything. So why do you think the enemy doesn't want people to be baptized in the Holy Spirit or have a relationship with the Spirit? 
Because he knows that if he can prevent that from happening, he can keep their house divided. Does everybody get this? A house divided will not stand. Everybody's house here has been divided at some point, and it's crumbled, but you got back up. You might have lost doubt, fear. You, you, something might have pushed you out of the way. You might have had a tragedy. Something where the enemy was able to begin to divide the house, but not completely destroy it. And you know it. A house divided will not stand. It first starts in your own house, your temple. The emotional and physical attacks of lust on your life, you must not allow it to penetrate your heart or it will cause division. Only when something has penetrated the heart will it cause division in your soul. Now your soul, of course, you know, is your mind, your will, your emotions, imaginations, your desires that bring forth these things. So that's why out of your heart you'll know the desires because it's the core of all desires. Amen? So when, when a heart's been penetrated, when the soul's been penetrated, and, it, and that house begins to get divided, it can't stand. It's unstable. It's unsure. It has confusion. So the first thing that the enemy wants to do is first attack your house, your temple, you as an individual. The second thing he wants, once you are divided, the enemy can use you to divide others. He promotes a flawed perception and a belief system. Did you ever notice how some people, when their house is divided, now they're uncertain of certain things? There's a place of uncertain. Well, maybe, maybe just, just, maybe this is not, maybe they, they're uncertain, they're unstable. They're tossed easily by emotion or by the voice of the stranger. The third thing that the enemy knows that he can, <laughs> he can cut off your lifeline to the truth of your freedom. He'll cut it off. Why? Because he knows he can prevent this from your relationship with the eternal keeper. He can prevent you from being led by the Holy Spirit by allowing this to happen. Then this starts spreading of rumors and false doctrines and lies and confusion, even fear. And then there's misleading to false fulfillments and the place out of God's will and out of God's time. Everything falls to that place. Why? Because it's the beginning of a house being divided. One compromise can begin that divide. One compromise. Two compromises increases the time of its division to be divided. So what happens is then what we're seeing right now is the world is in a divide. I mean, in the body of Christ, we see the house has been divided. Amen? But God's house ain't going to fall. No matter what. He'll just remove the ones that are causing the division. But in the world, we see a great division. But there's something. It's, so division in the world is chaos. It causes chaos. But now people are beginning to unite because they're being awakened. Unfortunately, until sometimes a bomb goes off, nobody's awake, you know. So we see this conflict in the world right now through all the lies and deceptions and the chaos that's happening. And the people are being forced to do things that they don't want to do, where their free will is being taken away, where the Antichrist regimes have taken offices and dismantling organizations and corporations and businesses, causing people not to be able to have food or clothing or shelter, preventing from supplies from coming so people become dependent on the rulers that once were servants of freedom and now dictators because they've been paid off because their house got divided and they've come to full-blown division and now they've taken the side of wickedness instead of the side of righteousness. But they're being exposed. They will not get away from, my daddy ain't letting them get away with nothing. Hallelujah. John 16. John 16, verse 5.
the eternal keeper, once you are born of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit comes. And he protects you and guides you, leads you all truth. Why? Because he's keeping your eternity. Amen? In verse 5, let's speak it. And when he was, oh, sorry, 16, sorry. So he called every one of his, wait a minute, I'm in Luke, sorry. I'm still a Lukey. Uh, John 16, verse 5, let's try this one more time. All right, but now I go away to him who sent me, and now you ask me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It's to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. Who's the helper? Amen. He's the eternal keeper. Amen. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin. And of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they do not believe in me. Of righteousness because I go to my father and you see me no more. And of judgment. Because the ruler of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you are not able to bear them now. In other words, you wouldn't be able to understand. However, when the Holy Spirit of truth has come, the eternal keeper, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. If he's going to tell you things to come, he's going to rescue you from traps. Amen. So why do people fall in the traps? Because this house began to get divided. He will glorify me for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore I said that he will take of mine and declare it to you. The spirit of truth will guide you to all truth. Tell you things to come. Warn you. Remember, he's the eternal keeper. He will keep us in the eternal stream of life all the way home if we let him. And John 14. And verse 23. John 14, verse 23. It's not too far. <laughs> and Jesus said to, that, to him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and he will come to him and make our home with him. He who does not love me does not keep my words, and the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while being present with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. That's why it's important to download the Word. Why? So the Holy Spirit can bring it to remembrance. Amen? It's amazing to me when people call themselves Christians and they don't even read the Word. So how can the Holy Spirit guide them? That person's going to be like a pinball in a machine, bouncing off of everything. And never maintained in the truth. He says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, but I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither be afraid. Oh, hallelujah. You have heard me say to you, I'm going away and coming back to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice because I said I'm going away to the Father. For my Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it comes. And when it does come to pass, you may believe. I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming, and he has nothing in me. But the world may know, that the world may know, I love the Father, and as the Father has given me commandment, so I do. Arise and let's go from here. Again, the Holy Spirit brings to remembrance the revelations, the illuminations, the promises, the words of covenant, certain events, and warnings, so we don't repeat things. But they must, and so these, the word of God must be loaded into our memory. Then the eternal keeper will keep us and bring it to remembrance. He is the eternal keeper. 
Amen. In Psalm 34. And the Bible tells us that the Lord is the Spirit. Amen? And that the letter kills, but the Spirit brings life. And those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons and daughters of God. In Psalm 34, verse 1, let's speak it. I will bless the Lord when? At all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Let me share something with you that there's, listen, there should be a song in your heart all day where you're able to connect to. There should be a song there praising the Lord. Your spirit, man, number one is your spirit is constantly praying in tongues. He's constantly giving intercession for you. Your spirit is constantly praying, praying, praying. That's all you're doing is connecting into, when you speak it out of your mouth, you're connecting into the prayers that are ready. If you stop and listen, you'll hear. If you're quiet enough, you'll hear the tongues going off in you. And there should be a song there every morning when you get up. Or even before you're going to bed or somewhere while you're driving, all of a sudden the song's in your spirit. And you can hear it. And you tap in and you start singing along. See, that's because he's keeping you filled. He's keeping you connected. He's keeping you, re uh, bringing to remembrance of who you are and your identity of who you are. He's keeping eternity alive to you. Not carnality. Not worldliness. It's not about your jobs. It's not about anything here. It's about him and everything associated with him. Amen? In verse 4, he says, I sought the Lord and he heard me and he delivered me from what? All of my fears. Oh, that emotional fear. They looked to him and were radiant. Their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried out and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his what? Troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him, reverence, honor, and respect him, and delivers them. Wait a minute. So the angel of the Lord encamps around an individual that has reverence to God, respect to God, honors him. What's the greatest way you and I can honor the Lord? Worship. Worship. Now, one of these angels can kill 185,000 people. And there should be around two or three. 2,000, what they call a legion of angels minimum, working on our behalf. There's no reason we should fear at all. They meant, in fact, we shouldn't fear death at all either. But that's one of the ploys of the enemy. Remember, Satan's greatest weapon is deception and his power is fear. Amen? Let's go a little further. Verse 8. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. The fear of the, O oh, fear of the Lord, you his saints. There's no what? Want, or that word want means what? Lack. To those who fear God, who reverence, honor, and respect. Now, if you're not carrying God's presence enough, can you maintain that reverence of God? No. Because it's the presence of God that maintains the reverence of God. Does everybody get it? I'm going to say it again. The more that you are filled with God's presence, the more it reverence God's presence. Oh, yes. He says here, there's no lack or want to those who fear the Lord. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. What are you seeking? You're seeking his presence. Come, you children, listen to me, and I will teach you the fear of the Lord, who is a man who desires life and loves many days, that he may see good. Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Why? Quench the spirit. Remember, what you speak is what you eat. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and do what? And pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and he, he, his ears are open to their cry. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. To cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. Again, the fear of the Lord. Reverence, honor, and respect. When the house is divided, the loss of respect to the kingdom living and his presence begins to happen. 
there's an exchange of reverence, which we call the fear of the Lord, for the fear, wrong fear. It's tormenting fear. It's fear with unrest. It's fear of insecurity, anxiousness, anxiety, worry. Confusion comes. And this begins to block, blocking the sight of an individual. Their hearing becomes dull. Their hearts become hard. And they desire vengeance and anger and self-righteousness. The person that abides in God's presence and will and word, there is no fear of anything except the fear of the Lord. When you're in that place, you don't fear anything. I mean, right now, the, there's so much fear all over the world. You don't fear. You don't fear anything. You shouldn't fear about being arrested. You shouldn't fear about well, if you're doing the right things before God. You shouldn't fear about assembling to be arrested. Heck, if they send you to jail, just bring salvation to the jail. Hallelujah. It's only temporary. Everything here is temporary. Amen? I love jail ministry. 2 Timothy chapter 1. Fear not. Isn't that the first thing that when an angel of the Lord shows up? What does he say? Fear not. <laughs> Fear not. When they saw Jesus walking on water, they freaked out. Whoa. It's fear not. It's all right. Fear not. Fear not. Why? Because he knows the cause division in the temple. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6. Let's speak it. There I remind you to I remind you to stir yourself, stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. Verse 7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but power and of love and sound mind. So you got to understand here, he's telling us, look it. When you've opened yourself up to fear, <laughs> your sound mind just bit the dirt. Love, love has been replaced by lust. And you become weak and not powerful. Amen? And the house starts its dividing. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of, him, of me, his prisoner, but share with me in the sufferings for the gospel according to the power of God, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began, but now has been revealed by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, to which I was appointed a preacher, an apostle, and a teacher of the Gentiles. For this reason I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I'm not ashamed, for I know who I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to what? Keep what I have committed to him until that day. Why? Because he's the eternal keeper, the Holy Spirit. Hold fast the pattern of sound words which you have heard from me in faith and in love which are in Christ Jesus. That good thing which was committed to you, keep by the Holy Spirit who dwells in you. Because he's the what? Eternal keeper. The spirit of fear is a divider of house, dismantles a sound mind and of truth, and love of God, and, and brings lust, brings fe the fear increases, power to overcome is nullified, you can't hear, you can't see. Only the eternal keeper can guide us to victory and freedom. To what? Everything that you've commit to him. Everything. That's why it's important to download everything of truth so the Holy Spirit can bring it up to remembrance. He brings it up. In Galatians chapter nothing. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 5. 1 Corinthians chapter 5. First Corinthians chapter five. And 
In verse 9, is everybody there? Almost. Glory. 1 Corinthians 5, verse 9. Let's speak it together. Therefore, we make it our what? Oh, sorry. We make it our aim to get to the right location. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, let's speak it. I wrote to you in my epistle not to keep company with sexual immoral people. And the word says, bad company does what? Corrupts good habits. Amen. Yet I certainly did not mean with sexual immoral people of this world or with covetous or extortioners or idolaters, since then you would need to go out of the world. So what he's saying, listen, if your brothers or sisters are doing these things, don't keep company with them. But now I've written to you not to keep company with anyone named a brother who is sexually immoral or covetous or idolater or revelry or drunkard or an extortioner, not even to eat with such a person. For what have I to do with judging those also who are outside? Do you not judge those who are inside? But those who are outside, God judges. Therefore, put away from yourselves the evil person. Bad company corrupts good habits. Amen. A house divided will have is bad company. And they will have what? Bad habits. <laughs> Amen. They will promote lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and lust of self. They always talk about themselves and not about God. Oh, they'll throw it in there to try and pretend that they're right with God. Galatians 3. Galatians chapter 3. Verse 21. Galatians 3.21, is the law then against the promises of God? Certainly not. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, truly righteousness would have been by the law. But the scripture has confined all under sin, that the promise by the faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. But before faith came, we were kept under guard by the law, kept for faith which would afterward be revealed. Therefore, the law was our tutor to bring to us to Christ, that we might be justified by faith. Remember, faith is your connection, forever attached into the heavenlies. Amen? That's your connection. We don't walk in blind faith. There's no such thing. So faith is our connection with the Lord. So in other words, the tutor was the law. What his purpose was was just to expose the things that, were displeasing to God. Amen? But there was really, so they had a relationship with the letter, but really not with the Spirit of God. Does everybody understand it? So they believed that if they just obeyed the law, they were good. But there was no relationship. So the mentor came. Holy Spirit is the mentor now. Now, because of faith and connection and relationship, we're not under the tutor, we're under the mentor. And the mentor is and the mentor is the what? Eternal keeper. So we're under the eternal keeper now. Everything is associated with eternal keeping, not temporary keeping. Amen? His concern is eternal keeping, not temporary keeping. Is everybody okay? Oh, hallelujah. All right. And verse uh, again, verse five twenty-five, but after faith has come, we are no longer under the tutor, for you are all sons of God through faith in Jesus Christ. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is neither male nor female, for you all are one in Christ. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise of God Almighty. In other words, we are joint heirs of Christ now in faith because we are connected to him. 
Faith forever attached in the heavenlies. That's your connection with the Father by the Spirit in the name of Jesus. You and I are under the guardian now of the eternal mentor, not the tutor. Keeping us in right standing with God and keeping us in position of trust as heirs and joint heirs of Christ. And keeping our number one most important thing, your identity. Your identity in Christ. Because that's the first thing that begins to diminish in an individual. Who they are. They begin to justify themselves. The enemy begins to convince them. Well, I'm a, I'm a teacher, or I'm a cook, or I'm a farmer, or I'm a truck driver, or I'm a... No, you are a child of the Most High God. Amen? You are Christ now. Christ. When people ask my name and I tell my last name, oh, you're Italian. I used to be. I'm Christ now. My blood runs from the throne room. When I had my long hair, people would say, man, what tribe are you from? I'd tell them Judah. <laughs> oh, why? Because I'm the Holy Spirit, the eternal keeper, no longer associates. Doesn't the Bible even say we no longer acknowledge Jesus in the physical? Amen. In the flesh? Amen. Why? Because we're a new creation in Christ. In Christ. Eternal realm. Kept by the eternal keeper. Hallelujah. James 3. Glory. James 3, verse 13. <laughs> Is everybody okay? Let's speak it. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, and demonic. Is this house causes division? Is it divided? Amen. And where envy and self-seeking exist, look at confusion and every evil thing are there. Why? That house is divided. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality, without hypocrisy. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. Again, wisdom tells us what to do. It's the Holy Spirit, the eternal keeper, that grants us wisdom. Amen? He is wisdom. And wisdom tells you what to do. Understanding tells you how to do it. In 1 Peter chapter 3. Glory. Verse 8. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 8. Let's speak it together. Finally, all of you be of what? One mind, like-minded with Christ. Having compassion for one another. Love as brothers. Be tender-hearted. Be courteous. Not returning evil for evil or reviling for reviling. But on the contrary, blessing. Knowing that you were called to this. That you may inherit a blessing. For he who would love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. Let him turn away from evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is what? He is against the evil. And who is he who will harm you if you become followers of what is good? But if you should suffer for righteousness' sake, you are blessed, and do not be afraid of their threats, nor troubled. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for hope that is in you with meekness and fear, having a good conscience that when they defame you as evildoers, those who revile your good conduct in Christ may be ashamed. For it is better if it will, were the will of God to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the just for the unjust, 
that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, made alive by the Spirit, by whom also we, he went and preached to the spirits in prison who formerly were disobedient when once the divine long-suffering waited in the days of Noah while the ark was being prepared in which a few, that is eight souls, were saved through water. So he says, sanctify the Lord. In other words, sanctification is a part of separation from the world. Amen? We fast from the world. We should have, every day is a life of fast from the world. Amen? Sanctify the Lord. In other words, why, as you make the choice to sanctify the Lord in your heart, the eternal keeper protects it. See, what he wants to do is get you to agree with him. Come on, sanctify that. Hold on to that. He's always trying to get you to agree with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is trying to get you to agree with the things of God. Because when you make the choice, that free will choice, he can seal it. He can protect it. But unless you don't, if you don't agree with it, if you're still up and down confused about what God says, he can't seal nothing and protect it. Now the enemy comes and steals it. Amen. Remember the word says he comes and steals the seed and so forth. In 1 Thessalonians 4. Let's start at verse 1. Finally, brethren, we urge and exhort in the Lord Jesus Christ that you should abound more and more, just as you receive from us how you ought to walk and to what? Please God. For you know what commandments we have given you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, your separation unto him, that you should abstain from sexual immorality, that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor, not in passion of lust, like the Gentiles who do not know God, that no one should take advantage of and defraud his brother in this matter, because the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also forewarned you, and testified. For God did not call us to uncleanness, but to what? Holiness. Therefore, he who rejects this does not reject man, but God, who has also given us his Holy Spirit, the what? Eternal keeper. But concerning brotherly love, you have no need that I should write to you. For you yourselves are taught by God to love one another, and indeed do so toward all brethren who are in all Macedonia, but we urge you, brethren, that you should increase more and more, and that you should also aspire to lead a quiet life, mind your own beeswax, and to work out with your own hands as we commanded you, that you may walk properly toward those who are outside, and that you may lack nothing. But I do not want you to be ignorant, amen? I'm going to stop right there. I don't want you to be ignorant about any of this stuff. Sanctify the Lord in your heart. Separate yourself. Abide. See, where there's sanctification, there's abidance. Amen. And I'm going to close at 1 John 2. Eternal keeper. First John chapter 2, verse 18. So whatever you're saying today, one of these songs should be running in you all day. <laughs> you can turn the channel to another one, though, you know. Hallelujah. Verse 18. Little children is the last hour, and as you have heard, that the Antichrist is coming. Even now, they're all over the place. <laughs> but when... <laughs> And even now many antichrists have come, but, but which we know, by now we know that it is the last hour. That's how we know. You know, that's pretty wild. Now we know it's the last hour because they're everywhere. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had, been, if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that none of them were of us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One. And you know all things. Why? Because he's called the what? Eternal keeper. The Holy Spirit. I've not written to you because you don't know the truth, but because you know it. That no lies of the truth. Who's a liar? But he who denies that Jesus is the anointed one and is anointing. 
He's an antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. Therefore, let that abide in you, which you've heard from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you will also abide in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he has promised to those who abide eternal life. These things I've written to you concerning those who try to what? Deceive you. But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you. In other words, connect, tap in. Abide. And you don't need that anyone should teach you the ways to live that please God. But as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things and is true and is not a lie, just as it has taught you, you will what? Abide in him. Abide in him. So abiding is the key, isn't it? Abiding in his presence. The eternal keeper is available at any time for anyone. That's why the Bible tells us, make sure you don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Make no place for the devil. Why? Because in the Holy Spirit, you've exchanged the devil's presence for the Holy Spirit's presence. You know, the Holy Spirit's presence for the devil's presence. Again, we are in a great, great battle. You'll even find that, you know, you may turn the, your music on and you'll be listening to the Christian radio station. All of a sudden, something changes. The next thing you know, you're listening to Heathen from Hell. And it's like, man, how did this happen? I'm telling you, they're doing everything they can to plant corruptible seed into God's people to cause a compromise and to cause a division. Because a house divided can't stand. And I can't stand a house divided. Praise God. So, Lord, we give you all glory, honor, and praise. We thank you for your word. We ask that you seal your word today. Bring healing and strength to each and every one. And, Lord, any area where there's been compromise, we repent. Any area, Lord, that you see our house beginning to be divided, Lord, expose it so that we may repent and turn from it. So fix every divided house in this house. And bring revival, refreshing to each and every one and healing. In Jesus' name.